السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Praise be to Allah alone. We all praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, none can show Him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Brothers and sisters, welcome to another live edition of your program, Ask Huda. And the last episode of Ask Huda during the blessed month of Ramadan for this year, may Allah the Almighty accept from all of us, pardon us and forgive us our sins. Allahumma ameen. Our phone numbers beginning with the area code are 002 and the alternative number is area code 002 0179 the email address is ask at huda.tv and the Facebook page is DR Muhammad Salah official. Before we begin, I'd like to congratulate all of you and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us. Taqabbal Allahu minna minkum. It's only a few hours left uh, till sunset on the last day of Ramadan, most likely, inshallah, Azza Jal. So it's a blessed dua to wish everyone qabul. An acceptance. May Allah the Almighty accept from all of us. Um, I read about His Eminence Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz. May Allah have mercy on him that whenever he was given an interpretation of the ayat uh, in which Allah the Almighty quoted upon us that وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِيلُ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ And I have always wondered with regards to this ayah, subhanallah, Allah the Almighty takes us from one position to another. Remember when Allah the Almighty ordered Ibrahim and Ismail, He honored them, both of them, to raise the foundations of the Kaaba, Allah's house on earth. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ Remember whenever both of them were raising the foundations of the ancient house, and they were entrusted and chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this task, for this very special task. And they were saying, رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Our Lord, accept from us, you are indeed the all-hearer, the all-knowing. Qabul is the most important thing. All our actions without acceptance mean nothing. And if just a little bit, of any act of worship which is done with sincerity was accepted, it means everything. What do you mean? In the Athar of Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, when he said, if I'm certain that Allah accepted from me any act of worship, even a single prostration, a single bound down, then I will be the happiest and I would like to die right now. He was asked why. He said, because Allah, the Almighty says, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah only accepts from the righteous ones. So if He accepted any deed from me, that's a sign of my righteousness. And Allah has always promised the righteous in the Qur'an with paradise. أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَازَ إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَعُيُونَ There are many ayat promising al-muttaqeen, the righteous ones, with paradise. To be continued, inshallah, after this call. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Farhana from the case. Hey, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, uh, Sheikh. Uh, I have just one question uh, for you. Uh, I've heard that is it, uh, is it haram for women to uh, use perfume? Okay, thank you, Sister Farhana. No, it is not. Thank you. It is not haram for women to wear the best perfume in the world if they want, as long as this is at home for her husband and her household, the maharim. She is not allowed to wear any perfume or any zina when she is leaving her house and going outside, even if she's going to the Eid prayer. Since 
tomorrow, uh, inshallah, in most countries, people will be celebrating Eid. And we see that uh, they think it's a carnival. So women wear uh, full makeup and they take their hijab off and they were revealing clothes and they were perfumed. This is not permissible. We're just talking about the Kabul. We're hoping that Allah will accept from us. We should not disobey him on that blessed day. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, if a woman happened to wear perfume, then she is going to the masjid. She should not go to the masjid. Rather, she should go home, wash it off first, then she can go back to the masjid. And this is going to the masjid, not going to a place where you'll be mixed with men who are not your mahram. This is not permissible. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Hamid from the case says, Assalamu alaikum. Try again, Brother Hamid. Okay. So, His Eminence, Sheikh Ibn Baz, cried when he was given the tafsir of this ayah. And he said, Subhanallah, this is a very special command, the command of building the Kaaba. In a very special time, very special place to very special people, Ibrahim and Ismail. Those are not any people. Those are people whom Allah commanded them to do so after he has tried them both. وَإِذْ ابْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ Many tests and trials. And when they were perfectly qualified, then he ordered them to do that. And that's a sign that they are not ordinary people. No, that's a sign that they have been divinely chosen. Allah chose them for this task. Yet, they're afraid. They're worried. And their first supplication was, رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ We're happy and we're delighted. Alhamdulillah, we almost completed the month of Ramadan, fasting and tahajjud and prayers and given in a charity and many of us have finished the Quran four or five times. But all of that is contingent on the Qabul, acceptance. That's why in, in the Indo pak they say Allah Kabul Kari. In Arabic they say Taqabbal Allah and this is a Eid greeting as well. In English we say may Allah accept. This is our biggest wish right now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Hamid from the KSA, welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, akhi. I just want to say advance Eid Mubarak to you and to the whole Khuda uh, team. Thank you, Brother Hamid, and Eid Mubarak to you and to your family. May Allah bless you, your family and the entire Muslim Ummah. Ameen. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Jazakallah. What is that? So I have about four questions today. Sure. The first one is, this the son of my brother-in-law died of heart attack. When? And he was about 40 years old and has two kids. In the lab. One is three years old, and the other one is one and a half years old. No. I just request you to please pray for them. Insha'Allah. May Allah have mercy on him and may Allah take care of his offspring. Allahumma ameen. May Allah make them right so his offspring. I, okay. Go ahead, Hamid. So I know that these kids are not uh, now entitled to receive any share from the property of their grandfather. However, can their grandfather give them more than one third from his property? So the first Okay. Yeah, go ahead. The second one is, what is the difference between Salat al-Tasbih and Salat al-Duha? The third question is, last week I asked a question, but I think uh, maybe I was not able to put the question across rightly. Yeah. My question was, that can I avoid seeing a close relative who has been creating troubles and serious problems for me for years whenever he visits us. However, I shall not cut off all other relations with him and continue wishing him well and also keep helping him financially and other ways as before. I just want to save my, myself and my family from his troubles. That's why I want to avoid him. Otherwise, I just want to keep all the nation intact. Alright, thank you. Okay. Sister Ummu Amn from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. 
Um, first, I want to say JazakAllah Khairan for offering the viewers this wonderful opportunity to ask questions throughout the month of Ramadan. And I pray that we will see similar episodes of Ask Khutan future Ramadans, inshallah. Wa jazakum. Um, Thank you, Sister I have, I have two questions. Um, hmm. My first question is, can a woman in her menses recite from the Quran if she wears love and she does not directly touch the mustaf? And my second question is, um, the day before yesterday, you mentioned a very beautiful short du'a with which the Prophet used to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I tried to memorize this du'a, but I forgot a part of it. Could you please repeat the du'a? Do you remember um, what was it about? Um, it was something, Allahumma uh, um, and oh, I no. forgot the Okay, I got that. Okay, the du'a um, is, Ya muqallib al qulub Thabit qalbi ala dini. Oh Allah, the one who changes the hearts, keep my heart firm on your religion. Ya, ya muqallib al qulub. Ya muqallib al qulub. Thabit qalbi ala dini. Yes. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. May Allah bless you and all the people at Huda TV and your family to the very happy age. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister Ummu Amin. Barakallah fiqum. Uh, MashaAllah, today while everybody is gone because people, um, you know, have uh, traveled to their countries, to their governorates and their cities uh, in order to celebrate Eid with their people, we have a handful of people who are, MashaAllah, uh, camping here in the studio in order for this program to be aired live. So may Allah bless them as well and uh, I'd like to extend my thanks and gratitude to all of them who have made a special effort to be with us today. I know it's hard because, you know, uh, right now everybody is with their families in their cities, in their respective cities and, you know, enjoying their time. But these people are making a special effort to be with our bigger family, Huda TV family, on air. Barakallah fiqh. Brother Hamid from the KSA. Um, his brother passed away and he left uh, youngsters, regardless of their age. If the father died while the grandfather is still alive, then the grandchildren would not have any share in the inheritance. And it is then recommended that the grandfather would give his grandchildren, who lost their father in his life, give them a grant of his wealth, because they don't have a set share in the inheritance. So Brother Hamid said, He's planning to give them more than one third. No. If you give them in your life, you can give as much as you want. But if you write a wasiyah, the Prophet ﷺ did not allow the wasiyah to exceed one third. And he also said, la wasiyah ta liwarith. And they are eligible in this case because they are not official heirs. They are not eligible to inherit. So you can give them a wasiyah, write a bequest or a will for them. It should not exceed one third of your inheritance, though. That is the maximum that the Prophet ﷺ has decided for the wasiyah. Uh, with regards to Salatul Tasabih versus Salatul Duha, Salatul Duha has a bunch of ahadith, sound ahadith um, in Sahih Bukhari and otherwise. It's a very important sunnah that. The vast majority of the uh, jurors say that it is recommended. And some of the jurors say it is even an emphatic sunnah. Okay? While Salatul Tasabih has a single, a single hadith with a weak narration, and we spoke about it repeatedly before, Salatul Duha happens every morning past sunrise. Okay? Salatul Tasabih, its weak hadith narrates that it says, if you can do it even once in your lifetime, and it has a very... Is, um, I don't want to say strange, but unique setup where you make certain number of tasbih as I indicated earlier. I personally recommend to come out of the khilaf and the confusion whenever there is a difference of opinion and I have the vast majority on one side saying that it is not prescribed. I would resort to other sunan which are highly recommended. You just mentioned Salatul Duha or the night prayer or the emphatic and non-emphatic sunan or praying at night. Uh, if somebody still insists on praying Salat Tasabih, we do not object to that because he, we say that he relied on an opinion of some of the scholars who said that even though it's a weak hadith, uh, he can do it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sister Manar from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. 
Sister Mana. Salam alaikum, Sayyid. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Huda. Thank you. May Allah bless you and all the crew members. Same and to you. Thank you. you all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I wanted to ask about um, the aura of the woman in front of her mahrams and also in front of other women. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Sayyid. Barakallahu fiki. Okay. This um, uh, Brother Hamid's last question is very, very interesting and very important because I guess uh, most people confront conditions like that. No one who have all his family members and relatives, close or far relatives, are cool and nice and beautiful and precious. No, some, some, some people are troublemakers. Some in-laws are troublemakers. SubhanAllah, when, once they visit, they create trouble at home. This is their nature. So what should we do? Should we sever our relationship with them because of that? No, we should not. We do not want to be in, 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 in the pit of um, severing the relationship with our relatives. And this is uh, a very severe sin, and it is punishable with a very severe punishment. So what should we do? Maintain the minimum relationship. Keep distance. Um, eat congratulations, visit them if they are sick, um, you know, whenever they have a happy occasion, take a gift, but keep distant from them. Salamu alaikum, uh, you know, uh, phone them, but do not socialize, do not mingle too much with them, as you just said. So avoiding them does not mean to sever your relationship with them completely. But you know the area when they come close to, it becomes problematic. And this is through experience, so you gotta be uh, careful to avoid this area. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Ali from Nigeria, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa sheikh. How are you, Ramadan? Thank you, Brother Ali. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah accept from all of us. Go ahead. MashaAllah. I love you for Allah's sake. Thank you so much. May Allah love you as well. Appreciate it, Brother Ali. Mashallah. My, my my question is one, sir. No. I I was married for ten years now mm -hmm. and my wife has series of miscarriages. She had eight, eight miscarriages. Mm. So we decided not to stress the the method. Yes. To to lay down things and wait till God wanted us to have a baby. Okay. So in that case we adopted a baby girl from her uncle. Mm-hmm which means we have an adopted daughter. To put her in the nursery school, I used my name. I know that... Yeah? I know that Islamically, I'm not supposed to use, change her father's name. But I would want her to at least grow up to an age where she could understand that this is her father, and this is his name. So I register her with my name. Am I wrong Islamically, sir? Okay, Salaam and is it, is it legal to register her in her actual name, in her father's name? Number one, is her father known as an orphan? Are you there? He knew. Is her father's uh, name, is, is it known? Her, her father's name is Abu Bakr. It yeah, is so it, it is known, okay, right? And is it yes. legal to register her in her actual name? The daughter of Abu Bakr? Yes, I, I, I must have to confirm with the school authority. I, would want, I, I don't want them to... I guess I got your question, Ali, no problem. If her father's name is known, and uh, it is okay to register her in her father's name, you should not change her name, not even on papers. Barakallahu feek. Zakallahu khairan. Allah the Almighty says in Surah Al-Ahzab, ادعوهم لآبائهم هو أقسط عند الله so we have a Quranic reference in this regard السلام عليكم and it all begins like that normally the, the, the adopting parents would say I don't want the, the baby to feel that he or she is an orphan so I give them my name temporarily then they grow up this way then they say I'm afraid to break his or her heart but this is the reality she's an orphan or he's an orphan and you're very kind and sweet to look after her and you sponsor her May Allah bless you and your family. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Sophia from the KSA. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Eid Mubarak to you. Thank you, Sister Sophia. Eid Mubarak to you and to your family and to the whole ummah. 
Jazakallah khair. What is that? Sheikh, I wanted to ask you about, um, we, are, we are not purified and we want to fast, and but we take the bath after Salat al-Fajr. Can we do it? What happened after Salat al-Fajr? I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Um, we, we are not purified mm. and we want to take the bath, the bath after Salat al-Fajr. Okay, Jazakillahu khairan, barakallahu fiki. Yeah, if the menses stopped before Fajr and you intend to fast on the day before dawn, it doesn't harm you if you perform ghusl after the adhan. What matters is that you're purified or the period is over and you're clear in this regard and you intended to fast on the day before Fajr. So the fasting of the day counts as a fasting of Ramadan. Um, Sister Ummu Amn, the recitation of the Quran while in the menses. This is something that we have discussed uh, repeatedly. I would be more than happy to summarize it for you again. There is, uh, there are two different opinions in this regard. An opinion which says women during their menses or anyone in a state of Janaba is not allowed to uh, recite the Quran, not even by heart. The second opinion which says, yes, in the state of Janaba, the Prophet Sallallahu would avoid reciting Quran, and nothing would stop him from the recitation of the Quran except the Janaba. Janaba means the measure of impurity. Uh, but there is a difference between the two cases. Whenever a man is in a state of Janaba, can lift it simply by performing ghusl. But a woman who is experiencing the menses for seven days approximately, more or less, she is stuck with that. How come that she is deprived from the recitation of the Quran? We have to have a clear sound proof. Accordingly, they say, it is only forbidden to touch the Quran with bare hands. But if you read in the Quran from your smart device, from your tablet, or read in the Quran by heart, it is permissible. So we have two different views. And um, lately, I tend to accept the later one, especially there is a reference that when Aisha radiallahu anha um, was performing hajj with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and she started her menses so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to her do everything that the pilgrim would do other than tawaf and the pilgrims do dhikr, recitation of Quran and uh, all of that so uh, was it uh, had it been forbidden, the Prophet ﷺ would have told her not to recite the Qur'an uh, as well. But there is a general consensus that you cannot touch the Qur'an with bare hands while in a state of major impurity. Barakallah feek. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Omar from Qatar. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Ahlan wa sahlan, Omar. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How is Ramadan? Ramadan is over. Now we're approaching Shawwal. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, yeah, Allah reward us very well. Allahumma ameen, ameen. May Allah accept. Shaykh, yes, Shaykh, I have one question, Shaykh. Mm. And um, Shaykh, um, it's my Muslim friend. Um, every time I'm together with that Muslim friend, you force me to sin. You, know, you force me to do something that um, every time you're training me, why did I do this? If I'm together with him, why did I do this? Or why did I command this? So and I, every time if I'm praying, I'm praying that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I do sujit, I'll pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let him prevent me from him, or let him take me away from him. Mm. Is it permissible for me to pray and I'm a Muslim? Is it permissible for me to pray that so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... Omar, how come they, they still call him a friend? Omar. Oh, he's always together, we're always together, that's what I say. Yeah, Omar, if he... If he's annoying you so much and you're actually praying that we're asking Allah to take you away from him or take him away from you, how come you still call him a friend? Uh, it seems like we're not communicating. Yeah. Uh, Umar is asking if somebody is annoying him so much and is causing so much trouble to him or, uh, you know, bothering him, can he ask Allah to take him away from him or separate them? Yes, you may, you may do so. If you have in your heart a feeling towards something which is good and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill it, that is permissible. 
you are worried about something that is bad or annoying and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rescue you from it, that is permissible. If somebody is causing you so much harm and you're simply asking Allah to protect you against his harm, that is permissible. If he's annoying you so much, you just simply ask Allah to protect you against his harm by taking you away from him or taking him away from you. That is permissible. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Muhammad from United Arab Emirates. Hello, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, Shaykh, first of all, Allah salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Alayhi salatu wa Barakallahu fi, you are, mashallah, doing a splendid job on Huda television. And Allah guide you and bless you and bestow from his knowledge on all of us. Uh, for you, it is a really, uh, uh, it's, it's a really a good thing, mashallah, to see your show Amen. and to hear a lot of questions and uh, hear from uh, your answers from uh, the knowledge Allah has given you. Um, I, I have a question, uh, two questions actually. Uh, is it permitted to say Sallu ala Nabi when you are departing from somebody? For example, as the way we say Assalamu Alaikum when we meet someone, can we can we spontaneously say Sallu ala Nabi? In order that he will say Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No. Uh, this is one question, and the second question is that uh, recently when I went for the prayers of Qiyam al Layl, uh, there was somebody who told me that uh, it was not the practice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the Sahaba to pray the Qiyam al Layl in congregation uh, because it is an individual prayer between Allah and uh, the person. So mm. I asked somebody uh, if I am in the mosque and I see there is a Qiyam al Layl in congregation. Is it better for me to pray it separately, or is it better for me to join the uh, the jama of uh, Qiyam al Layl? Mm. And he told me uh, he told me uh, it is preferable you pray it alone. So uh, I just wanted to clarify uh, which is the better option to pray the Qiyam al Layl in congregation or to pray it uh, one on one uh, as an individual prayer. Even mm. even that I go to the mosque and I pray it alone. I hope that uh, these questions are answered uh, yes, with the is. grace of Allah. And I hope I have not caused any confusion to uh, no, anybody no, no, with my... No, 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 no. Thank you, Brother Allah Muhammad. Wa jazakum. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Nuri Deen from Algeria. Last night. Nuri, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Askuda. Brother Nur. Assalamu alaikum. Go ahead. Uh, please, uh, I have a little question which I, is disturbing me. My question is, I mean, uh, in Saudi Arabia, okay, I hear many uh, uh, scholars, they used to say the uh, cigarette is haram. Mm. But, I mean, Saudi Arabia used to see many Muslims that smoke cigarettes even in Ramadan. Mm. After the breakfast, they smoke. But I don't understand because it's, I feel some... Something in my heart, I want to know very well that is it haram or is not haram? That mm. is my problem. That's what I want to know. Because even in haram, when people, when you go to haram, after you, uh, you, you are outside haram, you see people smoking some of the, in, uh, their haram, they don't take the haram, they smoke. I, I surprised. So I want to know in Islam, is it haram or is not haram? That's my problem. Taib. Got it. Thank you, Brother Noor. Naveed from Oman. Assalamu alaikum, Naveed. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Uda. Yeah, how are you, Sheikh? Fine. Great, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Sheikh, I'm from Pakistan, basically, but uh, working in Oman as a civil engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, the question, they, uh, they, uh, people are uh, Ibadi, men Ibadi. Yeah. So what is their aqidah and can uh, we pray beho behind them? Because I, I, I asked uh, previously uh, some uh, alim from uh, uh, Saudi, so he, he told me that uh, we cannot pray behind them. Thank you. Got your question. Oh. Yeah, Thank yeah. you, Naveed. Brothers and sisters, we're due to take a short break, and we'll be back, inshallah, in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. Oh.
سبحانه وتعالى from فقير from needy from helpless from the one who is poor of course the servant of Allah يا أيها الناس أو people أنتم الفقراء إلى الله you are truly the needy ones to Allah under different circumstances all of us are possible targets of shaitan he will try his best as he promised from the very early beginning of mankind to attack us we are lost without Allah's guidance that we will be an easy prey to the devil to Satan to shaitan to Iblis to the challenge that Allah Azza wa Jal made for all of us as humans on this earth against his whispers and we try our best to prevent and to block his plans and his plots. May Allah Azza wa make our houses heavens. May Allah make our houses places of peace and tranquility and love and mercy and compassion. May Allah protect our houses from evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our houses full of Iman, full of Qur'an, full of Dua, full of piety. And The word of God, a miracle sent to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the Lord of the universe. وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ على قلبك لتكون من المنذرين بلسان عربي مبين. This is the Quran circle on Hudati. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. We have um, some pending questions from the previous episode. Brother Umar uh, from uh, Qatar and Brother Muhammad from uh, Brother Muhammad from United Arab Emirates. Uh, his question were uh, when people are leaving each other, they say assalamu alaikum and they enjoin each other to send the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Generally speaking, one of the most virtuous deeds is sending the peace and the blessings upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is a great form of dhikr, is a great form of worship. And Allah commanded that in the Quran in Surah Al-Ahzab. So when I say salli ala al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa I'm actually uh, following the command of Allah. Ya ayuha al-ladheen amanu sallu ala, ya ayuha al-ladheen amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. The ayah begins with, in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. But now the problem is with um, prescribing a certain time that it should be said, like it's inseparable from the salam. So I say, assalamu alaikum, alaikum assalam, salli ala nabi, salli ala nabi. If it is just a reminder whenever, it is definitely permissible. The person who reminds the people with it will be rewarded for it. And the person who would say it is rewarded for it. But to prescribe it at a certain time, uh, as a certain zikr that is not permissible because the Prophet ﷺ would have done it, would have informed us about it if it is prescribed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Abu Mazin from Oman, assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam. Um, Shaykh, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is uh, shaving beard uh, during daytime uh, invalid, please? Fasting? Is what? What is your question again, brother Abu Mazin? Shaving beard. Shaving the beard. Does it uh, break the yes. fasting? Yeah, during fasting. During fasting. Okay, got. 
All right, thank you. Uh, Sister Sophia from the KSA, Assalamu alaikum. She's back on the line. Salam, Sheikh. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Sheikh, one more question. I'm very sorry. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh, the, uh, if we get our if we if our, if our mentors stopped at night and then uh, we want to take a bath and we are sick, what should we do? Wait until you recover. But what matters is that you should not postpone Fajr prayer from its fixed time. You do not have to take the bath immediately, okay? The ghusl, I mean. But whenever it is Fajr prayer, and now we are in a state of tahara, you must perform ghusl to live the measure impurity so that you can pray. Okay? Thank you, Sister Safiya. Brother Nuruddin, who opened the subject of smoking, and the scholars say that it is forbidden, and meanwhile he sees people smoking in the haram, smoking... Um, you know, around the Kaaba, once they step out of the Haram in Mecca, all over. So how come? Well, whenever people are doing the Haram, it is not an indication that it is halal or it is not Haram. Whenever Muslim countries serve wine in their hotels, in their restaurants, and uh, they offer uh, belly dancers, and they have uh, you know places for prostitutions, and they give license to prostitutes, it doesn't mean that it is permissible. Whenever the state or the law of the state, even if it is a Muslim state, allows riba and usury, it doesn't mean that it is halal. No, it means it is haram and they are at fault. I always say that banning smoking is not going to be simply by uh, talking about it day and night, smoking is harmful, smoking is forbidden, because those who smoke, they can read, and if they cannot read, they can see the images on every cigarette box. It shows them the lung cancer, the lips cancer, the mouth cancer, and it shows them the lung cancer. On every cigarette box it says smoking kills, smoking is carcinogenic. After all, how could a person say, well, smoking is halal? When Allah the Almighty says, يُحِلُّ لَهُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ Allah said about the Sharia of Muhammad وسلم, that he makes for the believers every khabith as forbidden. Every evil, every harmful thing is forbidden. We know that smoking kills. So it is haram. وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ We're not supposed to kill ourselves by our own hands, nor expose ourselves to any harm. So throwing ourselves in harm's way, in harm ways, in harm's way, is not permissible. And accordingly, smoking is not permissible. My dream is one day that I see Mecca is smoke-free. Mecca and Medina at least smoke free in a sense that there is penalty because people Uthman ibn Affar radiyallahu an said in Allah la yaz'u bil sultani ma la yaz'u bil quran there are certain things in order to accomplish them there has to be a law and order not just to leave the people up to their conscience and whether to do it because it's good or not to do it because it's bad no there must be a law and order a punishment a penalty Look in the States. In, uh, a few years ago, they used to have a designated area for smokers. Now it was eliminated, and smoking is not permitted in any restaurant, in any uh, you know, uh, closed place, at work, even if it is your own business, smoke outside. Then it was you know, a certain distance. You have to be away from any entrance of any building. To smoke. You want to kill yourself? Kill yourself away from us. This is how it is. Imagine when they say, in Mecca you're not allowed to smoke. Because I don't want to disobey Allah, neither in Mecca or other, in, uh, in other places outside Mecca. And I don't want you to annoy me and hurt me with the offensive smell of your smoke. You know, in these lofty towers, you know, 
70 floors and so on. It's very dangerous when people are smoking. And the door, uh, the, the room next door to me, they're smoking and somebody is having asthma in the room and they're coughing and you knock on the door and you beg them, please, you're coming for Hajj. Please have mercy on us. Do you call the front desk? You call the management? They can do nothing. There are too many people. But if there is law and order, even if this person is a big shot, you'll be arrested. Not just pay a fine. Leave Mecca alone. Leave the Haram alone. Leave it clean. I hope somebody would hear my statement one day and they will pass this law and they will ban smoking in Mecca and Medina. I hope so. Uh, my dream is to ban smoking for good and to uh, ban the factories which make cigarettes or tobacco. Uh, that's, it's a dream of every sane and healthy person. But until then, may Allah make it easy for us. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Hussain from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, uh, I, I want to ask one question. I... Hussain, you're wrong. You're on air. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, our Imam of Jama'a in Pakistan said to uh, Very bad connection, Brother Hussain. Please try again. Okay. Brother Faiz, United Arab Emirates. Faiz, assalamu alaikum. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Brother Faiz. Uh, should I give my question? Yes, please. You're live on Ask Koda. Yeah, my question is, I have taken I have taken loan from the bank. Mm. And the same money I have invested in a company. And that company is paying me profit every month. So my question is, is that money which I have invested in the company, Am I supposed to give the God for that money? Okay. Thank you, Brother Faiz. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yeah, the money which I, the money which I invested in that company, it is a loan which I took from the bank. No. So this money, am I supposed to pay the God for that money? Okay. Got your question, that Brother Faiz. That is my Fais. first question. Yeah. My second question is, I am working in a company. I am receiving salary. Mm. So am I supposed to pay zakat for the salary if I'm not having a saving which will come in a uh, year calendar? Okay, got two few questions. <clears throat> uh, Naveed from Oman. My answer to the question is based on our studies to the different sects and different beliefs which are ascribed to the Muslim Ummah. I don't know what they practice in Oman. I haven't uh, been to Oman. I haven't visited Oman. I don't know what they practice. But the Ibadi sect, they have some major differences in their belief than the mainstream of the Ummah, such as the issue of the creation of the Quran. They believe that the Quran is created. It is not simply as we believe the mainstream of the Ummah. It is the word of Allah and it's not created, neither he spoke it out. Also, they interpret the traits of Allah. So the type of the, the belief in the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they give the traits of Allah uh, an interpretation, similar to another sect which is known as Al-Mu'tazila. Uh, also, they deny the fact that the believers will get to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment. They say that's not possible. The believers, even though who enter Al-Jannah, uh, will not get to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ نَاظِرَةٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نَاظِرَةٌ On the day, some faces will be bright, beautiful, looking at the Lord. Okay, and there are many hadith in this regard. But of course, they have the references of the sunnah is different than the references of the mainstream of the ummah. They also believe that uh, a person who commits a major sin becomes a kafir. While the uh, you know, mainstream of the Ummah, according to the Quran and the Sound and Hadith, it, even if the person commits a major sin, he is still a Muslim, he's a sinner. But he, he, he seeks forgiveness and the sin will be forgiven, or he receives adequate punishment and the sin will be waived. But he is still a Muslim. Iman increases and decreases. So these are major differences in the belief. Stick to the Imam 
or the jama'ah of Ahl sunnah find a place where uh, you can pray with them. Jazakallahu um, khayran. Uh, Brother Abu Mazin from Oman as well, shaving the beard while fasting, would that invalidate fasting? No, it would not invalidate fasting. But is it permissible? No, it is not permissible. Shaving the beard for men on any day, day or night, is not permissible and it's a sin because the Prophet ﷺ commanded otherwise. And the founders of the four schools of fiqh are in agreement that it's a wajib, it's a must for Muslim men to let grow their beards. There is a khilaf with regards to the length of the beard, but growing the beards or not shaving the beard is something that is commanded by the Prophet ﷺ in the sound of hadith. Uh, Brother uh, Faiz from United Arab Emirates, I will answer two of your questions um, at once. If you talk alone and you invest it in a company, in business, and also you're receiving salaries, how to pay zakah on that. As long as the loan is not due to be paid right now, and you're investing in this money, then you pay zakah on what you have. And if there is any payment which is due paid, it will be deducted from, deducted off from the zakah. You don't pay zakah on it. But as long as it is in your position and you're investing it, then you pay zakah on the entire amount. Also, when you have salaries, instead of, there are two ways to pay the salary, to treat each month's salary independently and pay zakah accordingly. But the easier way is, whenever it is due to pay your annual zakah by the end of the lunar year, just simply count and calculate your entire position of the saving and the investment and pay zakah on the entire amount, that's a lot easier and it will take you away from any confusion inshallah. Brothers and sisters, if tomorrow inshallah is Eid, it is recommended to pray the Eid in an open place, perhaps outside the city limits, so that it will encompass the biggest number of Muslims. It is also recommended that you break your fast by eating dates or drinking water or milk before going to the musalla. Perform ghusl and wear your best clothes. Men, women, children should go out, even women who are not, minister, who are not praying because our minister waited, they should go to uh, the musalla. But women during the menses do not pray, of course. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَلْيَخْرُجْنَ tafilat," And women should go to the musalla. Tafilat, very ordinary clothes. I mean, they should not wear any perfume or any makeup or any zina or any glitter. That is only for them to wear at home before their husbands, not for the public. When Umm Atiyah radiallahu anha, the narrator of the sound hadith, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi sometimes a woman does not have a jilbab. The jilbab is the outer garment that she wears from head to toe. He says, let one of her sisters lend her a jilbab to emphasize the importance of attending the Eid prayer. Tomorrow is also Friday, so it may coincide the Eid and Friday prayer. What should we do? It has been narrated in many a hadith, some marfu' um, which means it's been narrated directly by the Prophet ﷺ, and some mawquf, which means have been ascribed to the companions. That the Prophet ﷺ happened to pray Eid one day on Friday. So after the Eid prayer, he said, those who attended the Eid prayer, if they wish not to attend the Jum'ah, they don't have to attend. This is for men. Why? Because there are two Eids on that day. So if you do not want to attend the Jum'ah, that is permissible. But the Imam must attend the prayer in the Masjid and hold the Jum'ah for those who would like to come and for those who did not get to attend the Eid prayer. What about if I took the concession? The Prophet ﷺ said, لمن شاء. But he said, وَإِنَّا لَمُجْمِعُونَ So he himself led the Jumu'ah prayer or prayed the Jumu'ah. But for the general public, if you attend the Eid prayer tomorrow, if it happens to be on, the, on Friday, if you attend the Eid prayer, then you're exempt from attending the Jumu'ah. So you don't pray anything else? No. After Adhan, you get to pray Zuhr four rak'ahs. You get to pray dhuhr, four rak'ahs. It is recommended to wish each other a happy Eid. Text messages, emails, postcards, 
happy and blessed Eid. You can even send it from now if you want to, inshallah. And do not forget to pay your sadaqatul fitr before the imam starts leading the prayer. Because after the prayer, it becomes haram, and you still have to give it, and it becomes voluntary charity, not mandatory zakatul fitr. Brothers and sisters, by the end of this episode, and by the end of the blessed month of Ramadan, I can but ask Allah the Almighty to accept from all of us, and wish you all a happy Eid. تقبل الله منا ومنكم وعيد مبارك. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم See you in sha Allah our very next episode will be on Tuesday والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah is my